Hey guys, John Loxa here, back with our playthrough of Dungeon Siege 3. Alright. Alright. Oh, there's Jack. There's Jack. Well, do you want to get in my lap? He was kind of eyeballing me a minute ago. Oh, hey, just before I start, I want to give a shout out to Fine Carpa, who's been uh, watching my stuff and, and commenting on a few of my videos. I don't know if, if he or she will ever see this. Um,. But if you do, thank you. You know, it's, it's, would you get in my lap? You silly cat. Would you? <laughs> um, no, but it's, it's, uh, uh, I mean, like I responded to someone's comment on one of my Monster Girl Island videos and, uh, and I was like, you know, I, I just hope you guys enjoy the videos. I try and make them fun, even though they are you know, light versions, right? Because Monster Girl Island is a adult game. And so I have to cover up some of the portions and edit out. Well, to be fair, I haven't edited anything out yet as much as I've covered it up and, and uh, done stuff like that. Uh, but Fine Carpet was like, hey, we come to see you, you know, if, if they wanted to. Because I was, yeah, they were basically like, hey, don't worry about editing out the because it, it's a it's a free game you know if anyone wants to play it they could but you know they were like hey if, if people wanted to see the scenes they could play it themselves we come to see you and i was like oh thank you so thank you kind of a would you sit down now now jack is in my lap but he just likes standing for whatever reason he doesn't want to lay down which is annoying <sighs> They're my babies, but they were leaving me alone before this. Now they're awake, I guess. They got awake from their nap or something. I don't know. Now they have all the energy in the world. They were running around a minute. Oh, oh, there. Okay. Look, just don't get in front of the monitor, okay? He's rubbing his face against the speakers, and you better not be chewing on those cords. You, Jack, what are you doing back there? I'm going to go into dad mode in a second. All right. I'm watching you. Oh, okay. So, let's fight the sandworm, maybe. Okay, we got little ones. And... Hey, they're a little bit tough. A little bit tough. Ouch. And if you hear something, that's Jack rubbing his face against the microphone. Oh, that doesn't look good. Look at all those. So it is entirely possible we'll die. Are you chewing on the spring on the boom mic, you silly weirdo? I'm gonna maul your face. I don't smack them anymore because it doesn't do anything, but don't do that, you little cat. Oh, good grubs. Well, there's the big one. Giant sandworm, there you are. And we'll just, uh... We'll just pull everything out. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And just punch. Wow, these things are, like, after me, dude. Candelabra. We'll pick that up. I don't know what's going on with, uh, Lucas. Something big, I presume. What are you doing, Jack? You're so weird. Ouch. I'm just gonna activate all the things again. We're... Wait, what is... What is that? That was weird. That seems to do okay. Okay. 
Right on, Lucas. Get him. Objective complete. Wormskin shoes. Vengeful pauldrons. Gladius of Blight. Lucas is running around. That actually wasn't so bad. And, you know, it just makes sense that during the... These things are tough, though. During the course of the battle, you'd burst these things open. And these things take a lot of damage. Or maybe they're just highly resistant. That could be as well. Punch! Punch them right in their wormy faces. But no, it's it's a little weird, I have to admit, to... I don't know, there's no right way to say it, just to... be... Hmm. not liked. That's not the right word. I don't know. It's like the hint of fame, but I don't... That's the wrong way to say it. It's just, it's just, I don't know. Like I'd always assumed, I mean, don't get me wrong. I knew the, uh, the person is a part of the experience, right? Worm skin shoes, armor up, chaos poison. Eh, I mean, it's better, but I like the will. But the, um, I figure the person is probably secondary, maybe, as far as... <coughs> mm, excuse me. It's Jack's fault. I'm lying, but he's sitting here glowering at me because I won't let him chew on the springs on the, the mic boom. Did I say boom mic? I think I did. It's the boom for... It's not really a boom. It's an arm. Anyway, stamina up, attack and armor down, block up, which is suck. Which is suck. You know. And, uh, yeah. Will up. Sure. Wow, even... Though attack and agility... Well, attack goes down. Agility is like critical hits. The fact that will goes up makes attack DPS also go up. Heck yeah. Okay. And then we shall save. But no, it's, it's nice to be wanted, I guess, if that makes any sense. Um, all right, what did our... Uh, I don't know, I'm not going to let it go to my head just yet, maybe soon. But <laughs> um, but no, because like, I'd always put it as... Oh, hey, there's a bunch of peeps. I'd always put it as, you know, the person was essentially secondary, which still might be the case. Um, but... Right on, Lucas is kicking ass now. But still, it's, it's cool for someone to be like, hey, you know, we... We enjoy... You. Oh yeah, get the money, Lucas. Where's my money? Claymore of Subduel. That's a big one, I think. Alright, what does this say? Oh man, I gotta get my... I'm gonna have to get my little visor. Giant sandworm. Sandworm has been sighted nearby. Oh, I read that. There's two of them, I guess. In case you don't go that way and you go this way instead, it's like, hey, there's a, there's a thing. Oh, and more guys. Zap, zap. Oh, that's Lucas. He... When did he run by? But anyway, the point is, it's nice to be... appreciated. I guess. That's one of the big things that people, I think, or creators or whatever, get out of it is the... validation, I guess? I don't know. I don't know, I'm, I'm not trying, I don't want to be conceited. I'm not trying to sound conceited, I probably do, but if, you know, I do, then... 
Okay. But it was cool, so fine, Carpa. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna have to... Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. That air from the air conditioning vent is blowing right into my eyes. I have to grab my little... My stupid little green visor. Hang on a second. There we go. If you guys haven't seen it yet, I don't think I've worn it on any of the videos where I have the face cam going, but soon, I'm sure, because it doesn't always bother me, but sometimes it does. Maybe when I'm tired or uh, I don't know what it is lately. The Maybe the weather has just been changing, and so the air conditioning just feels like it's going stronger, even though it's not. You're welcome, friend. This is the Abbey of St. Hiram. Well, Sister Eleanor will want to meet you. I think she's praying in the chapel. Sounds good. Sister Eleanor will want to meet you. I think she's praying in the chapel. These, water, these waters are consecrated to Radiant Azunai. Cleanse yourself in the pool and be born anew. Um... Whoa. Oh. Player respecialization. By bathing in these magical waters, you are able to regain all the ability, proficiency, and talent points you've spent so far. You will then be able to redistribute those points as you see fit. Taking advantage of this wondrous ability has a price, however, as the waters will not confer their blessing unless a sum of 20,000 coins is deposited into their depths. Would you like to respecialize this character? This is irreversible and will cost 20,000 coins. No, thank you. Uh, Lucas, also no. That's cool, though, that you can do it for both characters. Oh, and it's per character. Also no. Now we know. Now we know. Oh, I thought I saw something shiny over here, but I did not, I guess. Oh, that was weird. Camera zoomed in. We have weapons and armor to trade. Have a look at our stall, if you like. Yes. I would like that. Ooh, look at all this. Look at all of this. This is probably endgame stuff. Oh, and there's my mouse. Probably from the kitties. You know, Jack, you could get in my lap if you wanted. You don't have to not. That sounds weird. Oh, this must be new for her. You know what? Let's... Before I do anything, because we've... Okay, so he did get something new will up doom uh no that's fine and then we'll party select and we'll switch and equip the different characters uh what was it, it was the chest plate right vestments of rage yes that is way better everything is better in fact and it's got the cool fire look to it This isn't even my final form. I don't... I don't know why I said that. The final form thing. I don't know, Jack. I don't know. Okay, let's sell some stuff. Sell some garbage. Vengeful pauldrons, spalders. Ah, oh, man. Man, I don't know why. I'm just like, it. Man, the air might still be getting to my eyeballs. Whenever air blows on my eyes, like it took me a while to figure out what it was. <clears throat> but the um. Like, it makes me feel tired. Ah, oh, man, and now I'm yawning like freaking crazy. Okay. Well. Oh, for Christ's sake, who's texting me? It's 
probably my buddy. I texted him like three days ago. He's not the greatest about responding to texts in a fast manner. Okay, this might be worth buying. Antique as Knight shield, armor up, block up, and warding. It's also gold. Uh, let's see, sand silk vest. Will is down, attack is down, but agility armor and chaos is up. Uh, are you fucking kidding me now? Hang on, let me check, see if... It's, is it going to continue? Am I going to keep getting freaking texts? Because it might be like some stupid ass group text. And those are the freaking worst. Yes, it is a freaking group text. Son of a bitch. Yeah, okay. God damn it. Well, I'm getting called into work early. That's great. Always. Why is it always that? Okay, hang on. Sorry. Uh, let's see. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Uh, let's change this to get up at I don't know five. All right, that'll be wonderful. <clears throat> okay, great. Riding leathers of the desert steed, yes. And that's, hopefully, that's the... Okay, we'll buy this for Lucas. Boom. See, unfortunately, one of those things where... You know, they text you, and then they don't stop texting you because you're expected to always be by your phone. And you don't understand. Maybe you guys do, but I really don't like that. It's like I put my phone down, but a lot of people just want to be like, Oh, well, you know, you're, you're beholden to work even when you're not at work. And it's like, no. I'm already beholden to work by taking call a lot. Sister Eleanor can help you. I'm new to the Abbey myself. Okay. She's a quest giver, presumably, I think. I'm not allowed to unlock the gate. Not unless Sister Eleanor gives the word. Warning, Professor Jabberhack, formerly of the Stonebridge Collegium, is rumored to be hiding out in the Aranoi Desert. According to his former colleagues, Jabberhack has been conducting illegal experiments on the bodies of the dead. He's extremely dangerous and should be avoided at all costs. Is that a quest? Yeah, there you go. Warning, Mad Matthias, the infamous Lascanzi brigand, has recently been sighted near the Abbey. He may be accompanied by a gang of cutthroats and thieves. Outstanding charges against this criminal include murder, assault, mule theft, and contributing to the delinquency of a goblin. Well, isn't that nice? All right, then uh, I guess we'll save again. Uh, let's see, we saved. Sure, we can just save over this one, that's fine. Let me just... Sorry, let me pause and check that last text message real fast just to make sure. Thank you. Okay, that works. That works. It means I gotta get up even earlier. All right, well, anyway, enough about complaining about work. I was in the Abbey Tower, and I saw the old causeway come to life. Your legionnaires. I'm glad you made it here safely. Not everyone does. Not even the ones who are armed as well as you. I fought undead monsters in the desert. Is this place under some kind of curse? Yes, but it's always been like this. Centuries ago, long before the monks built the Abbey, this was a religious center, a refuge for an Azanite patriarch and his followers who came here from the Empire of Stars. Then they turned to heresy, and the Legion was sent to destroy them. Now they haunt the ruins, sometimes asleep, sometimes not. Should I say I'm surprised you're friendly? Um... Yeah, why not? Not to be rude, 
But you're a lot more hospitable than the other Azonites I've met. When Jane rose to power, the monks of this abbey turned away from her church. We do our work in Azonai's name, not Jane's. I'm sure she'd like nothing better than to teach us all a lesson in obedience. Fortunately, she's very busy, and very far away. Indeed. I came here to find someone. His name is Etienne du Marnay. The Legion hero, yes. He was here, but that was years ago. He went into the vault under the abbey. No one ever saw him again. And the vault is sealed. We don't know how to get inside. There's a vault under the abbey? Yes, but it's much older than the abbey. It was built at the same time as the ruins in the desert. The vault was the reason that Dumane was here. I wish I could tell you what became of him. That seems like a bad idea. Like, hey, let's, uh... There's this vault in the desert and we don't know what's in it or we don't know how to get op get it open. Let's build something on top of it. We were told that Dumarne was here waiting for us. Maybe he got out of the vault. No one at the Abbey has seen him. But if you want to know for sure, only one person could tell you. Our former abbot. His name was Simeon. He showed Dumarne how to get into the vault. They went inside together, but only Simeon came out. Sorry, maybe I misheard. Didn't she say... No, I guess she said no one no here knows how to get into the vault or something like that. Dumarne was looking for something here. What's inside the vault? The greatest treasure of the faith. We don't know anything more about it apart from the name. I've lived all my life at this abbey. I've read every book I could find, and none of them gave me so much as a clue. That must be what Dumane was after. Could Simeon have killed him? Simeon? No. Our abbot was many things, but he certainly wasn't a killer. I knew Simeon when I was very young. He tutored me, taught me to love the books in this place. Underneath all his bluster, he was a good man. Is this Simeon still alive? I think so. He abandoned the abbey years ago. Now he lives out in the desert, somewhere in the ruins. If you're going to look for him, I'll ask the monks to unlock the abbey gate. You may come and go as you like. Our abbey is protected against the undead, so you can use this place as a refuge, and I'll help however I can. You seem eager to help us. I'm a little surprised. All these years, I thought the Legion was gone, but I always admired them and what they stood for. When I was little, I read every book in our library that had even a mention of the Legion. A childish obsession, that's what Simeon called it. If I'm looking for Simeon, where's a good place to start? There's another set of ruins close to the Abbey, set back into a gorge. That's the only place the monks have ever seen him. I don't think he wanders any farther into the desert. Can you tell me what else is out there? A temple, abandoned for centuries. They say that it's guarded by old magic from the time of the Empire. There's also a cave, the source of an ancient spring. One of our monks spends most of his time there. Okay, I wish this air conditioning would turn off already. The little visor thing that I have helps, and this is, you know, just random information you guys don't need, but whatever, I'm gonna put it out there because, you know, you can understand how crazy I am then, I guess. It's, uh, the little visor helps, but it doesn't block everything. So it's like the air, I still feel it like all over me and it's just really annoying. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why, like right now, it's always, it just seems to be more like when the heat of the day is going away. Like, cause it, you know, it was a little bit cooler today, but it was still hot. And so now the sun is set or finally setting and that's when it starts getting a little bit cooler, but that's when the air conditioning seems like it affects, or it just feels colder, which I guess it probably is actually, because it's comes from outside, kind of like the air conditioning unit is outside. So technically it's probably colder. 
I don't know, I'm just annoyed that it's blowing like right on me. Why would this monk spend his days in a cave? Eridai is very old, older than Simeon. He's been here longer than any of us. He believes that the cave is more than it seems. He thinks it's the reason that the temple and the vault were built here. And also I'm not drunk enough to let the uh, air conditioning not bother me. Thank you. I'm sure I'll see you again. Please tell Simeon that he is missed, and he's always welcome to come back to us. I will, sister. Of course, now I can't get very drunk at all, because i got to get up even earlier. And go to bed. Soon. Alright. These are the bones of our patron, Saint Hiram. Jolly fellow. That's his portrait on the wall. Okay, there he is. So what do I manhandle the the remains with? Is he a mummy? Uh, it's a skeleton. Skeleton. I saw a reliquary, and I, my brain started saying airy, so skeletary. Uh, let's see. An ancient-looking skeleton lies upon the stone bier. In the alcove behind the bier, someone has painted a large portrait. Inspect the body. The body has been wrapped in fine robes, and it wears a large gilded symbol of the Azunite Church. Aside from its missing hand, the skeleton looks well maintained. Why would they take the hand? Reliquary of St. Hiram maybe it has to do with the uh, ring. The rotund figure is dressed in the simple attire of an Asnite monk. You recognize, recognize him as St. Hiram, Eb's only native born saint. Then again, you know, they could probably just take the ring off. Oh, there you go. Fine golden ring marked with a shield of Asnai adorns Hiram's right hand. Seems out of place in contrast to his humble monk's robe probably the key to the vault but I don't actually remember can I oh that was a okay that was weird oh I can go this way right on what about this way yes this tome appears to be an old legion chronicle one page catches your eye in the year eight or 1080 five legion cohorts were dispatched to the Aranoi desert under the command of the great grand mage Olvis our mission was simple, eliminate the heretic community that had taken root near our border. When we arrived in the desert, we were we met with fierce resistance from the heretics. A few of their number were a gallon knights, and they were well trained in magic. The leaders retreated to their vault, where they held out for almost a week until Olvis and his apprentices finally destroyed them. We all knew the heretics were wicked people. They had murdered our beloved Saint Hiram along with many of their own number who refused to forsake their traditional faith. But Olvis went beyond the goals of our mission. He cast a terrible curse upon the, upon the heretics, trapping their souls in their own corpses and walling up their leaders behind the stones of their vaults. So you created undead. Good job. Wouldn't it have been better just to let them die? In hindsight, we should have recognized the Grand Mage's needless cruelty as a warning. Later that year, he would betray the Legion and try to usurp control of the kingdom for himself. Ah, oh, well. Yep. Always gotta watch out for snakes. Snakes. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I talk, I know I talk about a bunch of different stuff. Uh, let's see. Ceremonial altar. An ancient stone altar stands before you. Though the braziers that flank the altar are unlit, they radiate intense heat from an unknown source. The surface of the altar is covered in a thick layer of cobwebs and dust. It hasn't been touched in a very long time. That's all you can do. But you can go down there. We'll check this other way first. Another treasure chest. Heroic cast and brust. Let's see. Look, brothers and sisters, I've lived in this part of the desert for most of my life, and I've learned a great deal about the horrors, the undead horrors that infest the ruins. Most of the undead are animated bones, the skeletons of the heretics who were slain by the Legion. As a result of the curse that was cast upon them by the Grand Mage Olvis, their souls are still bound to their mortal remains. But even when their mortal bodies are destroyed, the souls of heretics are forced to remain in our world. I have observed the so-called Sand Hulks in the desert, and I believe that they are animated by the souls of those heretics whose skeleton remains have been destroyed. When many of these disembodied souls flock together, they are able to shape the sand into a humanoid form that serves as a vessel to contain them. In this manner, they move about the desert and mindlessly attack any person they meet. 
Much of the time, the undead are dormant. In the past, they only awakened in great numbers when members of the Legion were near, no doubt sensing Legion blood and hoping to take their revenge. Still, I urge you all to be cautious if you ever leave the Abbey grounds. Eridai. Well, there you go. They're, they're pissed at the Legion. This book seems relatively new. It was written by Brother Cornelius. St. Hiram of Kettleburg lived in the early years of our kingdom. He was a portly fellow, renowned for his miracles, which had a distinctly culinary flair. In the latter years of his life, the Synod Synod called upon Hiram to perform an especially sensitive mission. A community of Asnites had fallen victim to heresy, abandoning the worship of Asnai for a false god. This community was led by an old Agalan giant called Molokai, and the hierarch hierarchs believed that Hiram could bring him back into the fold. So Hiram dutifully left his home and traveled north to the edge of the Aranoi Desert. He was met there by Molokai himself, but instead of a cordial welcome befitting an envoy of the church, Hiram was clapped in irons and imprisoned in the vault. For half a year, he suffered Molokai's torments until he finally died. That's not good. Outraged at this treatment of a good, noble man, the church synod synod declared a crusade. The legion marched north, slew Molokai and his followers, and set a terrible curse upon them so their spirits would be trapped in the world, never to return to the River of Souls. Great. Great. Yeah, so I know I talk about a lot of stuff. Um, I do talk about some stuff that it's just not opening. It doesn't say it's locked specifically, but it's not opening. Um, I don't talk about political things or, I guess, politics specifically, but I have talked about certain things that I suppose you could consider would be political. And I'm okay with that. You know, I mean, everything, I guess, is political in a sense, but... Our Abbey gives shelter to any who ask. We turn no one away. Good work. I mean, you know... We're free to discuss things or whatever. Like I... Pardon me. Could I speak with you? Yeah, I guess. I guess. But no, I know I say a lot of stuff and, you know... Whatever. It's... <laughs> I mean, no ill will. I know people are... It doesn't matter what I say. Someone's going to be offended by something. Right? Um, if that's you, hopefully you're rational enough and, and you know, we can kind of talk about it. And if not, well... I don't I don't know what else to tell you. Oh, what am I sitting on? Oh, sitting on the cord. Okay, that's not good. We're not supposed to ask favors of our guests, but I need your help, and I can't tell the other monks. All right, I'm listening. A few weeks ago, a traveler came to the abbey. His name was Marlow. He spoke well, dressed well. In short, he seemed a gentleman of quality, and I grew fond of him. He told me that he felt the same. But he had debts, or so he said. He begged me for coins from our treasury, so one night I stole the key. Let me guess. This Marlowe was really a thief. As soon as I opened the treasury door, he struck me, knocked me unconscious. Marlowe must have known what he wanted from the start. A golden chalice that belonged to St. Hiram. He took the chalice and left everything else. Our brother treasurer doesn't even know it's gone. Not yet. I beg of you, find Marlow and bring back the chalice. I'll put it back in the treasury and no one will ever know. That seems like a very upstanding thing to do as a, as a nun. Lie. <laughs> do you think he's heading south? Back to Ebb? No. There's any number of scoundrels in the desert. Maybe he's planning to sell the chalice to one of them. Marlow is smart. I think he'll stay near the abbey until he finds a buyer. He won't risk carrying the chalice for long. He left the gate unlocked behind him, so I know he went east. And it's only been a few days. He can't have gone far. Well then, we will find him. All right, so let's save. Uh, yeah, I think we can over, overwrite this one. So the thing is unlocked now. Have you seen the shrines in the desert? 
we used to light the sacred fires, but it's too dangerous now. Well, I will do it. Speaking of which, fires of faith. Okay. We definitely want to do those. And I can't punch yet, so I guess we'll see. There we go. Oh, they sensed my legion blood. Wow, that was pretty good. They just all exploded all at once. Get him, Lucas! Dead man's pass. Right on. What's over here? There. A dead man. Liscansi by the look of him. Uh, yep. This corpse is several days old and appears to be a Lascanzi mercenary. The marks from a strangling cord having cut into flesh are visible around his neck. His body has already been stripped of valuables except for a journal which is covered with dried blood. Been a few days since we dug up that old Aznite stash. The trouble is I don't trust my so-called partners. I'm supposed to meet Andre and Radu by the Oasis after the storm dies down, but I have half a mind to find the loot and clear out before first light. I'd sooner have my back to a Dakinware than those two. He was right. Okay, I thought that might have been a, a door or something. Or a hidden secret passage. Oh, hey. Corset of Rage. Rage. Rage against the dying of the light. And there's something up there, so I guess we'll go up there and do it. Well, these men don't look friendly, do they? Um, not so much, no. Hey, fellas. Oh, oh, time to... I can't... I can't take a whole lot of damage. I can take some, but when everybody's jamming on me, it's it's not good. Mad Matthias, there he is. May as well just get all of them. If we can. And, you know, use some of this stuff. Uh, is that Mad? I guess that's Mad Matthias. And he's toast. Right on. XP. It'll probably let us level up here in a second. Yep, okay. Well, electrocute. Get that one. Then probably this. I'm still fine with all of that stuff, you know? Like, I don't feel like I need to respec. Or anything. I'm sure I could, but I don't feel the need. Alright, treasure. Okay. All right, so it's about 40 minutes right now. Almost time to stop. I feel bad because I'm kind of... Oh, well, I don't, I don't feel that bad, but it's, it's, uh... I was planning on recording several episodes today, and I only recorded this one. And that, you know... This seems to be a Lascanzi holy book. Its pages are tattered and torn, but you can make out one passage. And the old witch spoke to the assembled clans, saying, Remember, brothers and sisters, the land that gave birth to our people, the sunset realm, Lascanza, upon the Sea of Shadows. It was in her purple valleys that our bloodline was born, and one day we must reclaim what is ours. Then the child stepped forward and asked the question that was on everyone's lips. But grandmother, if Lascanza was so beautiful, why did we leave? When the evil sect came to our land from across... A the coal black, coal black Sea, they enslaved our people and mingled their foul, foul blood with ours. For centuries we lived as thralls while the sect despoiled our land. But still we did not leave, asked the child. 
No, even then we did not go by choice. The Imperial Legions overthrew the sect and scoured our country. They cast us to the winds, and we have wandered the empty places of the world ever since. But one day our land will be born anew. That is why we must always remember, for on that day we return together to the land of our birth, and our exile will finally end. That's cool. All right, well, I don't know if that... Do we just run back and turn the quest in? Is that what we're supposed to do? Uh, or is it just, just, it's just, that's it. Okay, quest complete. Just get the experience and stuff. That works though. That works. Where, let me just, we'll just take a look at this stuff real fast. Stamina up, attack and wheel down, armor and block. I mean, that's probably good, but I like the will. I really like the will. Will down, basically, no. Okay, tell us about this. Stamina up, armor up. Yeah, no, I'm fine with what we've got. Why is Lucas blocking? Well, that's probably a reason. Whoa, we're getting just freaking destroyed there. Oh, see, this is where we could use that, um, you know, the special ability. But it's okay, we're healing. Is that it? Is that all, Lucas? All right, save point right here. Cool. And something back there, you know, we'll save. We shall save. Sad thing is I didn't even really... Oh, here come more uh, more enemies, though, so we'll... I sense my legion blood. I didn't even get to talk about, you know, financial independence or any of that stuff. That shield does look cool, though. Because that was something I brought up in the last episode, where it's like... You know, at least one the Okay. You know, talk about some of that stuff. You know, that way it would help you guys out, and, uh... I mean, potentially. Some of my information might be wrong, but the, the point is to... The point is to get the information out there and at least get people thinking about it. A vast number... I guess I can talk about it a little bit. A vast number of corpses were dumped into these pits and burned. The horrific scene seems to have been the aftermath of, of a battle, and these bones are all that remains of the losing side. They've probably been here for centuries. Oh, now we hear all the flies and stuff. No, it's something that I did want to talk about. You know, especially there shouldn't be flies though if it's if these bones and stuff are centuries old. Anyway. Um was the whole dead man's pass. was like the whole um donating to streamers and stuff like that, right? Like that's not I mean maybe I'll do that in the future. I I mean, you know, it's way too early to decide anyway, but you know, every time I I even consider doing it, I'll be watching someone else and someone will do a you know, a donation or a super chat or whatever. And they'll be like, oh, sorry, you know, that I'm not able to donate as much this stream. You know, I'm, I'm behind on my rent or something. And I just feel so bad. Because it's like... You know, that's partly why I'm like, I never want to do... I never want to have donations or whatever. Because that just seems... Like, I would... I feel really bad. 
You know, like, I don't want people harming themselves on my behalf. You know, that's just, that's just, like, it's, it's one thing if you have a lot of disposable income. And you're like, oh, you know, I've been watching this guy's stuff forever. Because that's one of the things that I like, is that it's, this is free. And, yep, okay. But let's run back and just make sure there's no, did we hit a trigger or anything? No, not yet. This is probably a good place to stop then, I guess. But just, yeah, it's like if you have a lot of disposable income, that's one thing. But if you have, um, if, if you don't, that's something entirely different. Exit to main menu. Because then it's like, wow, I totally distracted myself, didn't I? From the from the topic, Beca no, because it's it's the it's the thing like where I do this stuff for free. You know, I'm not I'm not charging. I want it to get put out there, and I want people to enjoy it because I enjoy other people's stuff, and I feel it's it's only fair. And that's the great thing about it is that you can put your stuff out there, and people can watch it and enjoy it. And I. I actually approve of the donation model as far as making money. Like, I, I hate ads. I don't want ads on my stuff, but they're probably going to be. Not necessarily even by my choice. You know, I might... You know, if, if uh, Square Enix or whatever decides to copyright or content ID this, any of these videos, there's nothing I can do. I can be like, no, it's... Don't do that. And they're like, no, we're doing it. Or YouTube's like, you know, uh, this is these videos, they're age restricted and advertisers won't want them, so you can't make money money off of it. But we're still gonna put ads on them. You know, like I said, I'm you know, too small for that sort of thing, but but they do it to other people. And uh, to me ads are kind of like a despicable not despicable. I understand these are people's some people's jobs are the YouTube thing, but it's an inconvenience, and I don't, I don't want to make money off inconveniencing people that watch my stuff, if that makes sense. And that's also why I believe the whole, the donation thing is the most moral, right? Because people can choose, you're not forcing them to watch anything, at least as long as just like, hey, there's there's a Patreon or whatever you can donate if you want, but you don't have to. All this stuff is whatever. Um, and it's like, yeah, you know, if people watch some of your stuff and like it and they have money they want to give you, that's cool. And if they watch a ton of it and don't want to give you anything, that's also cool. You know, and there's happy mediums and stuff, but people that directly want to contribute and, and thank you monetarily can do that but it it makes me feel really bad when i i hear people that i watch read those messages and i'm just like ah oh, no don't don't do that you got to you got to take care of yourself first and that kind of ties into the the you know financial independence slash early retirement thing or potentially early retirement who knows uh, how feasible that's going to be in the near future, um, but you gotta you gotta take care of yourself. You know, if you have spending money, then if you wish, you can donate it to those people. But but yeah, focus on on self first, and definitely don't put yourself into any you know burdens because of that. You know that just. You know, just, it's not a one or the other, you know, it's not, that's, that's kind of what I meant. Like, I've, I know I've said it before, don't sacrifice, don't light yourself on fire to keep someone else warm. That's, that's kind of what it is. You know, focus, if we're going to use the terrible warmth analogy or whatever, it's like, you have your own little fire, and then when you're ready, you can give them a little 
I don't know, a torch or, or something, a little flaming branch or something. I don't know. You have your fire that's burning. Make sure it's burning. I, it's a terrible analogy, but I'm going with it because that's what we're doing. So <laughs> anyway, now that I'm done rambling for now, um, that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for your time and attention. I really do appreciate it. This mead, I'm drinking some, uh, some mead right now. It's snuck it. Like at first I was like, Oh, it's not doing anything. Now it's like snuck up on me. Um, wow. Okay. It's really good too. Um, so that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for your time and attention. I really do appreciate it. Um, I really do hope you're enjoying these episodes. What is your guys' unique positive moment for today? For me, it's the mead. It's uh, Thorin's Viking mead, which is, uh, I guess, a local, a local mead. I'm not sure. I saw it in, uh, in a, you know, one of the liquor stores that I go to, and I was like, you know, let's give it a shot. And it's good. But anyway, that's my unique positive moment for today. Hopefully, your guys is just as good, if not better. Hopefully, better, of course. And I hope to see you guys next time. Until then, guys, take care. <laughs>